say you just joined the dark side and Lord Vader has required you to make a 3D model of the Death Star. What are you gonna do? This video will show you exactly how to make a 3D model of the Death Star. So let's get started. And before we start making this, there's just a few things that I wanted to note. For one thing, I'm going to upload this project file so that anybody can download it and load the file and follow along to this tutorial, or just use that file to quickly create a Death Star or a planet or whatever. One more quick note is that I added comments or little text boxes in this file to keep things organized. So that's one benefit you can get from downloading the project file. And the last note before we get started is that this project is actually very, very simple. It only takes about eight or nine different operators to create the Death Star. So here we have a new project. I deleted the default objects that are in there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to add our first object, which is the sphere. So this is going to be the shape on which our Death Star is based. So we're just going to double click on an empty area of the grid. That's going to open the OP create dialog. And I'm going to go to the SOP tab, the blue tab. And then from there, I'm going to click on sphere. So here is sphere. I'm going to click on that. We're going to place that somewhere on our grid. And now we have the basic shape for our Death Star. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a new SOP. We're going to connect that to our sphere. So we're going to double click in the open grid area next to our sphere. Once again, this opens the OP create dialog and we're going to make sure that we're still on the SOP category and we're going to click on attribute create. So we're going to click on attribute create. We're going to drop that just to the right of our sphere. And then we're going to connect the two together. So just hover over the blue squares on the right side of sphere, click that, drag it, and drop it onto the connector of attribute create. So now our sphere is connected to attribute create. I'm gonna zoom out so that we can see the parameters of attribute create because in the parameters, we need to change both of these values here. We need to toggle compute normals and compute tangents, both of these guys here. So we just turn both of those on and that's going to make it so our shape has more depth once we apply a texture or a surface to it. At this point, we're going to add a geometry operator to attribute create. And the way that we do that is a little bit different than the way we added these two operators because we need to hover over the two blue dots in attribute create, hover over those two blue dots, right click. And if you're on a Mac using a touchpad or a trackpad, you just kind of click with two fingers and that'll do a right click. That opens the OP create dialog. And what we want to do now is go to the comp tab. So we're just going to click on comp and then we're going to click on geometry. So click on geometry. I'm going to zoom out and we're going to place that geometry somewhere to the right of attribute create. You can see that it automatically connects attribute create to geometry. So we did that properly. And now what we want to do is just add a camera, a light, and a render operator. So just above geo, we're going to double click in the empty grid. We're going to go to the comp tab, which we are already at. Just make sure you're already in the comp tab. If you're not, click on that and we're going to click on camera at this point. So just go ahead and click on camera. You wanna drop the camera just above the geo node that we just placed. And then we're gonna move the grid just a little bit so that we have space to the right of camera. So we just double click in somewhere to the right of camera to open the OP create dialog once again. And now that we're still in the comp tab, we're going to click on light. So just go ahead and click on light, place that light somewhere to the right of the camera. And we're almost done with our render setup. We're more than halfway done with this whole process already. So don't worry, this, this is all standard stuff. So now just double click on the canvas or the grid below the light next to the geo. And what we're gonna do is add a render top. So just go to the purple category, the top category, and we're gonna click on render. And then we're going to drop that render below the light 
next to the geo. And you can see that it automatically created these arrows here. So that's good stuff. And basically I'm gonna zoom out and we're just gonna do a quick recap on what we've done so far so that we can make sure we're on track. So we have our sphere, which creates our shape. And then we have attribute create, which uh, basically adds some properties to our shape that gives it more depth once we add our Death Star surface to the sphere. And then our attribute create is going to a geo or geometry operator, which is basically creating a geometric shape out of the sphere. And then we have a camera that's looking at the sphere that's looking at the geo, okay? So this camera is looking at our geometry, basically. Then we have a light that's shining light onto the geometry so that the camera can see it. Finally, we have a render operator that is bringing everything together. It's using the camera, the light, and the geometry to render uh, our shape. And now it's time to add the Death Star surface to our sphere. So below the geo node here, we're going to double click in the open area and that's going to open the OP create dialog. And at this point, we want to go to the mat category or materials category. So click on that yellow tab and then we want to add the Fong operator. So click on Fong and then just drop that somewhere below the geo. And what this is going to do is act as an in between. Uh, between the actual image file or video file that we're going to use to put a surface onto our geometry. And now it's time to actually go and retrieve the image file that we're going to use as the Death Star surface on our sphere. So I'm going to show you how to find that image file in Google Image Search. So it's pretty easy. I just went to Google Image Search and I typed in the phrase Death Star Texture. And then I looked through these and they're really cool textures here, but I found one that seems to work better than others. And it's this one that you can see right here. And the title is pin on Star Wars. Somebody on Pinterest posted that, I guess. So what you need to do is click on this and download this image, save it to your computer. And you just drag into touch designer next to the Fong that we added. Okay, so we're doing really well here. We have our Fong and we have our texture here. And so what we want to do now is we want to link the Death Star texture to the Fong. So all you do is click on the movie file here and drag that onto the Fong until Fong, until the border is green. And then you want to drop that onto the Fong and then select Parm Color Map, which is the color map parameter. So click on Parm Color Map, and then you see this little gray arrow. That's how you know that you did it correctly. Now at this point, you just wanna scroll up a little bit and we want to drop Fong onto Geo. So just click on Fong, hold that, drag it, wait till Geo has the green border around it and drop Fong onto Parm Material. So that is the material parameter of our geometry. We want to just click on that. So we click Parm Material and boom, there you can see our sphere now has the Death Star texture added to it. At this point, we are more than halfway done. One thing that I'm gonna do is go to the render operator and just click on the blue button that says display so that we can see this in full screen in the background basically. So there is our Death Star in the works and now we're just going to add some height to the texture so that it's actually 3D. And the way that we're going to get height into the texture of our Death Star is to add an operator called Edge. And just to the right of our Death Star image file, I'm gonna double click on the canvas or the, the grid to open the OP Create dialog. And I'm going to click on the top category. So just click on top. And then once we're in top, we have an operator called Edge. So we're just gonna click on Edge and then drop Edge somewhere to the right of our Death Star texture. And then we're just gonna link Edge to our Death Star. So I'm gonna click on the two purple area, uh, two purple squares of our Death Star texture and then just link that to Edge. And now, as you can see, it basically just finds the edges of our texture 
and we're going to use that to create height in our Death Star. Now we just need to use Edge to create height in our Death Star. So we just drag Edge onto Fong until Fong has the green border around it, and then drop Edge onto Fong, and then click on Parm color or normal map, not color map. We already applied the color. Now we are applying normals. So we click on Parm normal map parentheses bump. And now you can see that a little gray arrow is now going between edge and Fong. If you see uh, in the background there where it's showing our rendered Death Star, it looks a little bit funky, but that's because we need to turn on one more toggle on this Fong. So now that you have Fong selected with a green border around it, I want to go to the parameters of the Fong, which are right over here, and click on Enable Height Map. So you click on Enable Height Map, and then you want to use the Death Star texture as the height map. Leave Fong selected, and then just click and drag our Death Star image onto this height map area right here. So we're just going to click that, drag it, and drop it onto height map. And now you can see the image is a little bit different in the background. I'm going to zoom out, and then we're going to toggle this switch that says Displace Vertices over in the parameters of the Fong. So we're just going to click on Displace Vertices, and then we're going to zoom out. And you can see our Death Star looks pretty funky there, but that's because the displace scale is quite high. So we go ahead and dial that down a little bit, and you can see that it adjusts as we change this. Okay, so our Death Star looks pretty funky at this point, but let's fix that quickly. We're going to make sure the Fong is selected, and in the parameters for Fong, we're just going to go to the Emit. So we're going to go to Emit and change that to about 0.7. And you can see our Death Star is kind of looking a little bit more realistic. Now at this point, I'm gonna change the bump scale to three. And we're gonna make sure our display scale is at about 0.84. Okay, so at this point, the Death Star kind of color should be looking pretty good, but as you can see, it looks pretty wavy looks kind of funky. That's because there's not enough detail in the sphere that we added. So we need to go to the sphere that we added. You want to click on that sphere so it's selected. And then in the parameters of the sphere, you want to change the rows to about 600. And you want to change the columns to about 1000. Okay, so that should get your Death Star looking a little bit more realistic with a little bit more detail. And now let's get the Death Star to rotate. So we're going to go to the geo operator, our geometry operator. We're going to click on that to select that. And then under rotate, we're going to put in this expression here. So under the first box in rotate, we're going to put this expression, which says abs time dot seconds times minus 10. So just enter that into the X parameter of rotate on the geo. We're going to put about minus 70 into the Z parameter. That should get your Death Star to rotate. One thing I like to do is just rotate this until you don't have to see the bottom of that sphere where the texture kind of comes together. But this does get you a working version of the Death Star. And if we look at the rendered image, you can see that we have the height of the little valleys in between the parts of the image file. So wherever there was a black line in the image file, the edge operator detected those black lines and then created height wherever there are not those black lines. So the little, the gray areas, those are represented by height. And we put that onto our Fong as the um, bump map or normal map. And wherever there is a black line, there's no height. So that gives it that 3D looking effect so that when it rotates, you can see uh, those kind of valleys go away. But that's pretty much it for the basics of the Death Star here. And at this point, you can modify it. You can add more detail. You can make it look better. And what I'm going to do now to finish this video up is actually go to the other file that I have created for this because that actually looks a little bit better. 
And I'm just going to show you a couple different things, different kind of surfaces you can put on a sphere and how those end up looking. You can even add a movie file to add an animated surface to the sphere, which is very, very cool. So let's check that out right now. Okay, like I said, this is the demo file that I created. That's why it looks different. I added some notes here, like little comments to organize this file, such as this is where we create our sphere. This is where we modify our sphere. This is where we add our surface, try different textures, video of an eyeball moving around. And we can, we can just kind of replace the Death Star texture with that movie texture by easily doing that. And you can see that this video file of this eyeball, also the edges are detected by the edge operator and that creates depth for this eyeball which is kind of a cool effect, I think. We can try some other videos, like this video of an aerial view of an ocean with waves breaking. So that is a really cool thing, I think, because once again, the edges are detected by the edge operator. So that's why the outside of the sphere is not smooth. It's, uh, you know, it kind of follows the waves as the waves wash around the sphere there, which is a super cool effect. One more video is an eyeball blinking. So here's an eyeball blinking. And as you can see, the eyelid edges are detected by the edge operator. And that gives this sphere depth of an eyeball. And as it blinks, you know, it's just kind of a cool animation. But let's check out some still images that work pretty well with this setup. So here's a jungle aerial view, and you can see that that works pretty well with this setup. And here's a moon texture I'm going to put on this sphere. You can see that works out really well. And I even got like an image of an anglerfish that looks just kind of funky and creepy. Here's a still image of an eyeball, a red eyeball that works out pretty well. You can see some of the height detected in that eyeball is now appearing as height. Um, and then we have an earth image here. Click on the output of that and replace that. So there's our earth. But yeah, anyway, I recommend that you make this setup and just mess around with different textures, different shapes. Uh, for example, you don't have to use a sphere with this setup. You can use a box or a grid or a rectangle or a torus, or a tube, whatever you want. So you can just replace the sphere with a different shape. You can change stuff with the camera. You can change the light color. And then finally, we have an output area where I just connected the render operator to a null operator. And then I can export our video from render or from null. That's pretty much it for the Death Star. I hope you uh, found this video useful. Like I said, I'm gonna make this project file downloadable so that you can download this file and do whatever you want with that. I almost forgot to export the movie file. I think that's pretty important. So what we're going to do, we're just going to click on File, Export Movie. I'm going to do that right now. That opens up the Export Movie dialog. I'm just going to drag Render onto the top video field of the Export Movie dialog. We can see our Death Star there. And then at that point, we just scroll down and click on Start to start rendering this video. And that's it for the Death Star. So I hope you enjoy being on the dark side now that you have created your Death Star.